The collapse of Silicon Valley Bank sending shockwaves across the country. It's the second largest bank failure in U.S. history. And federal officials tonight are scrambling to respond. But what does this mean for Arizona? Thanks for joining us tonight for 12 News at 6. I'm Mark Curtis. I'm Rachel Cole in tonight for Caribe Divine. And we do have team coverage breaking down this story from multiple angles. Team 12's Michael Doudna taking a closer look at the policies in place to protect your money whenever a bank collapse like this happens. Let's begin, though, with Bram Resnick with more details on the bank's connection to Arizona and the millions of dollars it received to set up shop here. Bram? Yeah, if you don't work for a startup tech company or invest in one, chances are you've never heard of Silicon Valley Bank, but your tax dollars help bring the bank to Arizona. What is Silicon Valley Bank? It's not like the consumer focus banks most Arizonans rely on. SVB was a unique bank with a single mission. And that's what's so significant and unusual about this particular bank. Silicon Valley Bank, the depositors, for the most part, weren't just mom and pops. CNBC's Andrew Ross Sorkin told me many of the bank's customers were significant startup tech companies. Some had the financial backing of billionaires like Peter Thiel. You heard very vocally from them all weekend pressing the government to bail them out. What's Silicon Valley Bank's connection to Arizona? 11 years ago, the California-based bank opened an office at Tempe's Hayden Ferry. The bank's sign is prominently displayed along the Loop 202. The office served largely as an operation center. The latest data available shows the bank had 590 employees here as of 2019. The average salary, more than $100,000. What's your connection to Silicon Valley Bank? All of us are connected to SVB with our tax dollars. According to the Arizona Commerce Authority, SVB received up to $5.8 million in state incentives, a total of $4 million in grants for creating 550 jobs, and up to $1.8 million in tax credits for what's called quality jobs. It's not known whether SVB claimed the credits. And the Biden administration is seeking a buyer for Silicon Valley Bank, so it's possible Arizona hasn't seen the last of SVB, and the hundreds of workers there haven't seen the last of their jobs. Let's send it back to you. All right, Bram, let's continue our coverage now. Uh, let's bring in Team 12's Michael Doudna. And Michael, the federal government does have protections in place in the event of a bank failure like this, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. And the best known and most common protection for the everyday person is the FDIC insurance, which simply backs most bank accounts in the U.S. up to $250,000. Now, the FDIC was established back in the 1930s to help build trust in the banking system. They step in during those rare instances that banks fail, filling the gap for insured accounts up to that $250,000 level. And since 1933, the FDIC says no depositor has ever lost a penny in insured deposits. 90 plus percent of people that have money at banks are, are below that threshold. So I think it's more of the outliers that have deposits above and beyond that. They've got to be a little more strategic in what they're doing and why and who they're banking with. But I think as a whole, the majority of the population should feel quite safe. And while there is that money limit, there is no limit to the number of FDIC bank backed bank accounts you can actually open up. You just may have to spread the money around to different banks, put in different people's names to be able to get that protection. And Jason File with Wild Wealth Management says he's not concerned about any domino effect impacting most people from this. Making sure that you understand there will always be noise, there will always be news. Um, a majority of the time it won't affect you, but be, be educated and understand um, what are these potential risks. But overall, I think rest assured the U.S. banking system is on solid ground. There's lots of things put in place to protect consumers and rightfully so. And since the issues with SVB, we've seen the feds respond in a way to keep faith in the banking system. They declared what happened to SVB and Signature Bank a systemic risk exception, which allows the FDIC to go beyond that 250,000 number. And one thing to bring up here, that the money that you end up seeing there backfilling these accounts is not paid through paid for through taxes, but through premium uh, premiums that banks and other financial institutions pay. Guys, back to you.